Hello everybody, Scott Roberts here with uh, Explore Scientific and this is Open Go To Community Live, uh, our sixth episode. Uh, yesterday uh, we uh, ran through uh, using the um, Explore Stars uh, iOS version on, on a uh, iPad and so we figured out how to you know, get a camera up over the iPad, uh, show a mount moving at the same time, learned how to hide Kent somewhere in the equipment. And uh, yeah, so, but he's still around. <laughs> Although there's all <laughs> kinds of rumors that, uh, you know, who Kent really is, you know. So um, Jerry Hubble's with us, of course, again today. And uh, um, so what's our, uh, what's our topics today, uh, Jerry? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about stuff that's going on in the forum some changes that I recently made, and I think Kent's got uh, some questions also to go over. And um, and then we might end up at the end showing a few photos that you can, uh, some of the examples of what our customers have been able to do with the PMC-8. Very cool. And imaging. Very cool. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. So, go ahead. Go ahead, I guess, Jerry. Uh, yeah, do you have anything to add to that, Kent? No, it's just uh, you and I came up with the same list. It was pretty interesting. So uh, go ahead and talk about the changes, and that leads into a couple other things. All right. Well, let me uh, let me let me go ahead and share my desktop. Can you see that? Yes, we can. All right. I want to first start out by talking about. The forum, everybody knows it's on the forum. We've got a main forum, and then we've got some subgroups. Um, the dev, a feature request subgroup, a beginners, IXOS 100 beginners subgroup, a mounts subgroup, and a system help subgroup. And um, I've been doing a couple of uh, some work on the feature request subgroup today, and, and I added a new hashtag called docs because one of the requests that came in uh, just yesterday talked about the improvements to the documents and some documents that people want to have created that deal with how to integrate other products into uh, into the PM using the PMC8 and how do you get everything to work so I created the docs hashtag to be able to label those types of uh, request and the one uh, let me see where is it here the doc subgroup let me see here it is and I had everybody. one request by Edwin Edwin submitted a request that dealt with explore stars and what uh, what he wanted to see in terms of a the manual on Explore Stars. So I said, okay, well, we're, we did the recent poll on the, our, our, our user manuals and found that people didn't like them as much as we would like. So one, so this is this is kind of a response to that. And we have this, uh, you can submit a request to ask for things that need to be added into the actual documents that we provide to our customers, um, not just that would be online in terms of an FAQ or in terms of um, uh, anything else, any other way to, to provide the information, but specifically in our documents that we shipped out, uh, that we print out and, and include with our equipment. Uh, so that's that's what the enhance, that's what the docs tag is for. Anything that you want to see specifically in the documents that we provide with our equipment uh, when we ship it to you. Uh, at least that's how I see it. Um, let's see. So the other th type of document is um, like I talked about how to integrate. Oh, if I've got it down here, can't find it. Anyway, it's, it's uh, oh, this is it right here from Harry. He said, I would really like to see additional or enhanced compatibility with ASI Air, StellarMate type devices. This would include documentation 
and instructions for installation. Now, so this type of request, uh, I'd like to include it in this list, but it would be assigned to the Open Go To community to provide that document. That's why I have this tag Open Go To, mm -hmm. in on the uh, on this mess on this uh, request because this would be up to the Open Go To community or everybody that's involved with the uh, PMC8 that wants to volunteer or contribute to that document. That's where it would be produced. It wouldn't wouldn't be Explore Star or Explore Scientific that would be assign that task basically so that's that brings up the one other feature of this so i'll go through this list of enhancements and requests and assign them to either explore scientific or to the open go to community to do just like that example there uh, another example of being assigned to the community is this request here to add a button to the PMC8 configuration manager to toggle the communications watchdog on and off. That would be added to the configuration manager, which is an open go-to product Chris Moses created. So he would be in charge of, of adding that feature. So that's an open go-to enhancement or a new, you know. So that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. there any, any questions about that? No, I think it's I think it's great, you know. So, um, you know, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, you know we're, we'll be doing uh, more uh, you know specific videos on um, on the uh, you know the Explore Stars app, but we will uh, we're going to go ahead and and move you know once we're beyond the Android and the Windows version of Explore Stars, we will move on to ASCOM connected um, uh, programs and, uh, you know, clients uh, to control the PMC-8 uh, and, you know, which would probably be more specifically beneficial to astrophotographers. So, Jerry, one of the things I had to talk about was under the, uh, you, had, you had posted about a something that was going to rear its ugly head pretty quick. And that was an overwhelming number of potentially duplicate entries. Right, right. So my thoughts on that were that if you're going to make a request or submit a request into this subgroup, then I would, I would ask you to please do a search on that group uh, for a keyword that you come up with that might describe the uh, enhancement that you're looking for. So I can demonstrate that. Let me go back. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again okay. um, and demonstrate what that would look like. Um, the whole point is so we don't cl clog things up with five people having the same idea. Right, and and I've already I've run across that already. And what I do is I when I find that I try to I combine those. Uh, I combine those or merge that those messages into the one message that has the first uh, the first submission of that idea. So for example, we've got I think we've got about 20 ideas. So if you go to search up here at the top, you can type in um, let's type in AS, ASI air. for example, let's say you want to make it a submission on ASI air something to deal with it. So I'm going to search for that. And you can see here, it came up with three entries. Um, and these are three, it brings up every message that deals with that. And it's under the same topic, of course. Uh, so that's, that's an example of, oh, and there's already a, a request submitted on ASIR. What does it say? And then you can read that and determine if yours is the same or if it's different. Something different, yeah. Uh, let's t let's search for another one. Let me go back. Is there anything on ASCOM? Let's look for ASCOM. Looks like Steve Seedentop is with us tonight. Thank you, Steve, for logging in. We're kind of throwing everybody off because we're we're broadcasting early. Um, today. Yeah. We have another right. show coming up 
at five o'clock. The uh, so this is what comes up when you look for ASCOM. There's there's a few things out there that are dealing with the driver, and also uh, actually that's just that's with the driver, of course, because that's what uh, that's what it's dealing with. Let's look for. Um, What's another good term? Let's say, um, <laughs> let me go back. Uh, explore stars. Let's look first. Yeah, let's see how many explore stars messages there are. It's quite a bit. There might be something, uh, let's say we want to see if there's anything dealing with uh, Android. Specifically, so you can see there's uh, maybe some things that we're dealing with Android, but I don't, you know, you'll, you can determine if it's Android or if it's more Explore Stars. I just thought of one I need to add in there. What is it? Um, that on the Windows version, when you click up at the top, there's a white line that stays there. So the entire screen's not red. Um, so we need to, that's an improvement in, the, in, in, it, in the Windows version. Um, so we want to make the red, a red screen or something? It, it needs to be all red. It okay. So no, no white light. All right, so there is, there's also, there is a uh, thing about red right. keyboard, option for red keyboard and explore stars. Um, see what that says. Let me, I'm going to fire my explore stars up real quick. Let's just see what it looks like. Yeah, so the original question was, uh, I'd love to see the keyboard rendered by the same night vision red as the rest of the app. So if you have a suggestion for to, to create that red or to, to correct that red, that white bar or whatever that's at the top to red, right. you might be added, it might be added into this. Right. You might, you might want to just add a comment on this uh, thread that's already there. Right. But like I said, I've just called it up and at the top, there's a white bar that goes all the way across that has that's there on the app. Yeah. And that's, you know, white light when you're trying to do that is a sort of a, yeah. Okay. So there we go. That's, that's, that's kind of thing we should do and search for first. All right. Let's see if there's anything specific to windows and maybe lumped in with other ones. So somebody suggested about an improved explore star search and Something about the alignment stars on Windows 10. So that gives you an idea how to do the search for a term. Now, we, we've got 20 suggestions, so more than likely what you're going to come up with is probably going to be different than what we already have. But again, we want to manage that list and make sure we don't have too many duplicates show up. So it's up to you to decide whether you think it's can be added into the existing suggestion or if it's a separate suggestion. Yeah, if there's something related, closely add it to it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay, so, and this brings up something, that the idea that I had, you know, the idea of being searched before you post on this specific sub-thread, that carries through on all the threads. Uh, there's all sorts of questions that we see, and this is, this is every form everywhere suffers from this situation uh on some of the facebook astronomy groups you see them i want to buy a telescope what's the best telescope to buy and you see that question come up two or three times a day <laughs> and you know yeah, you or, go to like or, telescope addicts or uh, facebook astronomy budget, club um some of these budget, budget astrophotography that question comes up a million times you know and and the point being before you post a question spend a few minutes to do a search of the of the main thread and if there's a subgroup to see if it's already been answered and you may have something that's new and unique or you don't understand then certainly post a thread and people sure. will jump in and help you 
But uh, well, I bet you also yeah. have to understand that beginners, newbies, they they still don't know. You know, they're asking. Right. You know, they come into something new and they see, you know, a vibrant community and you know, it's it's no different than you know uh, people coming up to us at a show and asking the same questions. So, and I never get tired of it myself. You know, I I I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> But, well, it's, it's because, but, uh, a little different when you have it's what different when you're a vendor and you're you got two or three people at a booth instead and instead of having 400 people seeing the same question come across. Uh, our our forum most forums are friendly. Our forum is exceptionally friendly. I would say we have yeah very rarely had any kind of any inkling of a dispute because we're friendly, yeah. right? So, and uh, I'm probably the biggest cause of any kind of consternation. Because I every once in a while I have to enforce the rules a little bit and and oh, it you're the it guy. pains me a little bit <laughs> it pains me a little bit to do that I mean I I try to let it go but then if I let it go then then it's not fair to everybody else you know if I let it go too long so that's kind of why I do that and, and, and the biggest policing action we probably do is trying to keep things on on topic on a PMC oh, related that, that's that's most groups though is yeah. keeping yeah. things on topic right yeah. and and. And Jerry does a really good job of, of, of being the sheriff, I guess, and saying, um, you know, hey, guys, steer this this way or, you know, we're, we're going right. to shut this down. And, you know, we don't want to be heavy handed, but at the same time, no, but keep things keep, PMC keeps really the information valuable and, and right. going, you know, along. So but uh, there's always a new guy but that our, comes in and, and Steve uh, yep. phrases it very well. You don't know what you don't know. Beginners, a lot of times don't know how to ask for what they're looking for. That's true, you know, so. Yeah. And if they're brave enough to ask, you know, instead of just thinking, gosh, you know, I'm, you know, they, no, they our, probably our have users, already been through this, you know, and I don't want to look stupid here, you know. Well, right. I'd our rather users they are ask. Good. Our users are good at, at answering the question. They, you know, most people are pretty tolerant. I think pretty much everybody's pretty tolerant to that. It's just, uh, it's interesting to see, and of course, Users don't know what they don't know, like Steve said. Um, and, and they're new and haven't learned how to use the, 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 the forum yet. And people are pretty good about jumping in and going, hey, we had this thread um, oh, back. And leading them to the thread. But that's, that's fine. Yeah, and giving them the thread, giving them a link to the thread. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, we had a question come up. Uh, Cesar Brolo asked... Uh, Many people ask him about periodic error contraction called PEG, periodic error control, correction control. Boy, I couldn't get it out. In the PMC-8 system for the Exos-2. We've covered that, but this is going to be probably a recurring topic. Jerry, why don't you spend a minute or so on, on that? So one of the tools that was invented probably 10 years ago at least is uh, or more – is periodic error con correction, and there's another variant called permanent periodic error correction. Uh, basically, what that does is it basically records the error in your tracking over a worm period. A worm period is one rotation of the worm, and it takes either four minutes or ten minutes or six minutes or something like that, depending on your mount. Our mounts uh, have a ten-minute worm period, and uh, Basically, the periodic error causes the starter drift in RA over 20 to 30, maybe 30 arc seconds uh, across the frame. And to correct that, what you do is you record that offset over time, and then you basically play it back and invert it and play it back while you're tracking, and that corrects the error to a certain degree, to around 70% is what I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can, you can correct it but not 100%, and it varies every rotation of the worm. It's not always the same. Uh, so in that regard, it if you're auto and typically you do auto-guiding to correct periodic error. That's the other system that's always used 90%, 95% of the time. People use auto-guiding to correct their periodic error. And I made a design decision early on that if people were going to have to track anyway, so no matter how good your periodic error correction is, you're still going to track and you're still going to auto guide. 
So my my logical thinking was, if you're going to auto guide anyway, mm-hmm. why add another system on to the PMC8 that you're going to have to manage and record and do all that? Where you, it's not adding any real um, big performance, any real benefit, right? For this for this level of mount that we're talking about, the I the XOS2 mount and the IXOS100 mount. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really add any uh, any benefit to layer periodic error correction or permanent periodic error correction or um, on top of the auto-guiding. Now, having said that, PHD2, which is the auto-guiding software that most people use, have a feature to do this recording for you and manage it all in your auto-guiding software. So in that regard, I know that Chris Moses and Steve Seedentop have used this system and get good results from it. So in that regard, it's not built into the PMC-8. It's actually in, managed within the auto-guiding software, which is a good spot for it, in my estimation. Um, so that's that's the two cents. So it was my design decision to not include it in the mount system, but there are tools that allow you to apply it anyway as part of the auto-guiding system. Yes. And it, and it, 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 it keeps us from having another layer of complication and overhead in the system but yet people who need it can get it in the various tools that are out there there, there was a once upon a time you know i was at mead instruments when we first put in uh, permanent periodic error correction you know at, at first we we started with uh, we actually had a machine that could uh measure the the pe uh in the in the raw gear itself and then it would write to a chip and uh and then this would bring the, the drive down at the time down to about four or five arc seconds, which at the time uh, that was uh, like observatory class uh, tracking. Okay, it was really good. Um, uh, it didn't correct for tooth to tooth gear errors. It didn't correct for a number of the other error terms, but it did, uh, it did make it so you had to chase the star less, okay? Um, and that was good for people that were doing it manually, right? Yeah, when they were I looking was, the scope to try there, to drive you it. You know, crosshair eyepiece, you know, it was like playing a video game. So instead of this thing taking off and, you know, with 20, 30 arc seconds of periodic error, it stayed down into about a four or five arc second circle. Uh, but guys got better at uh, managing that. So uh, Mead allowed uh, uh, people to export the uh, tracking. Uh, corrections down into a spreadsheet and then you could you could adjust the numbers for the tracking and then re-import it back in and improve it so guys like Jason Ware and some other people were doing this uh, and then we uh, we decided well we're gonna open it up and allow people to write it and erase it you know and uh, um, so that that became this uh, PPEC uh, Product and me did an excellent job of marketing that and uh, you know bringing focus on this particular uh, drive problem and a lot of people are getting much better astrophotographs and all of that um, but uh, we didn't have the other tools that you have today so you know PhD two wasn't out and uh, um, uh, things like the telescope drive master wasn't out and so there was uh, you know we have new tools now that actually as you say, Jerry, manage it better. So, so, so is PEC almost a legacy system? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and right. the, pre- the reason why people are still asking for it is, you know, uh, Mead spent uh, uh, millions uh, advertising, including, you know, with all the rest of their marketing, uh, really talking up permanent periodic er- error correction as if it was the you know, the, uh, you know, the whole the only way of, of tracking, which is, right. it's a good people one. People look at that. It's not. Yeah, people look at it as if it's the only way to do it. Yeah. And it, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, I hate to say break so, it to people. Yeah. Say and so. even auto guiding. Yeah. Caesar's bringing it. Yes, it's true today. When you have improved PEC accuracy, it's time to use the guider because you're using the single exposure over the 32nd time, which is nice. Okay well over the guiding control software, and that's the best way. Um, uh, but uh, Caesar will probably also remember that the first auto guider was uh, for popular use with amateur astronomers, 
uh, was uh, the SBIG ST4. Uh, so you had, there was a whole learning curve on using that. Um, and uh, step by step, this auto guiding software got better and better and better. And so, and now it's kind of routine for amateurs to use this. So, all right. So let's jump in real quick and look at some of the pictures that our the users images. have yeah. shared yeah, with yeah. the they've taken. This is some some spectacular. Jerry, you're going to share your screen, right? Yeah. Let me uh, let me get it up here before I share. Yeah. And we do have to cut the program. Uh, you know, we're coming up on the half hour, uh, but um, we have to cut the program here in about um, three minutes, two minutes. All yeah, right, can you see actually, my screen? Through. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just scroll through. There's a there's a fixed. So if you look at the top. The show tomorrow, if we want to expand on more astrophotography, we can. Do yeah, that. let's just let's just shut it down. Let's show a couple real quick. Just one or two. Yeah, time. we can so pick up tomorrow. There's a there's a lot there's a link at the pinned link at the top of the main group page it's called Astrophotography Done with the IXOS 100. Post your picture here, and we get a lot of people posting. Oh, nice. So here's an example. This is uh, Chris Tardif. Mm -hmm. North American Nebula uh, with a Canon T5 um, auto guided 640 uh, millimeter focal length, which is a little bit above what we suggest for the Axos 100. But you can see it's very nice. Uh, this is a stack of 30. He did three minute exposures. So this is a stack of 30 three minute exposures. And he's got round stars. Look at that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And uh, so that's another. So here's another one. Who's this from? This is Jim Hecht. Um, 2,405 second exposures unguided. Yeah, this is unguided. So this was just the native RA. Uh, unguided? Uh, <laughs> really? Unguided. I mean, I'm trying to see what the uh, focal length is the here. The stars are slightly egg shaped, but not much. A William Z61. This is cropped. Oh, wow. Unguided. So he had a good polar alignment. Pretty faint nebula yeah. was going after, I guess. Huh? Well, he stacked them, so I imagine it was right. good. So yeah. what yeah. else do we have here? I mean, I'm going to come Galaxy through. Galaxy shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a, um, M M51. Yeah. This well, is guys, uh, go ahead. This IX plus 100. Two-star alignment. Canon 1000. Tamron, it was a 200 millimeter focal length, 15 seconds, 59 exposures, 15 seconds each. So the important thing to note is he did a two-star alignment. So this is tracking in both DEC and RA, and he still managed to get this. I guess uh, we don't suggest you do that, but that's if he did that and it worked fine for him, that's great. Well, never tell an amateur astronomer you can't do something. I know. Yeah, that's right. They'll figure out a way. They'll figure Always out a way. Out a way. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, so that's right. a good example All of right. uh, some of the images well, that you can this get. This will be cool uh, to show some more of this tomorrow. We have a we yeah we we have uh, we have coming up uh, Rodrigo Zaleda from North Optics in Chile. Now uh, he is uh, he is in La Serena, um, Chile, and this is just kind of down the mountain from. Uh, Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory, where uh, uh, we were up at, uh, you know, uh, doing the eclipse, but it's also home to some of the most productive telescopes in the world, uh, super dry climate, ultra dark skies, and all around this region are, uh, is astrotourism and stuff like that. So it's just, uh, to me, it's an astronomy, uh, astronomer's Disneyland, you know, it's really cool. Um, Rodrigo, as uh, he's, his background is he is a, uh, uh, he did ge geodesic uh, work for a mining company. And so we'll get into that in our conversation with him and find out how he made his dream come true by opening up his own telescope shop and really getting involved in educational outreach and astronomy. So a uh, pretty cool story. And uh, he's got some astrophotography he's done from the Southern Hemisphere 
And, uh, and by the way, he does use an Exos 2 PMC-8, um, you know, uh, as, as does Cesar Brillo, who often follows this. So, um, and I hope to Yeah, he helped a, us test out the Southern Hemisphere changes. We had to make sure it worked okay. That's right. Yeah, he was actually instrumental in doing that. He's one of the first guys, uh, actually him and Cesar are both uh, helping us in that regard um, to make sure that our system plays down the Southern Hemisphere. So, uh, hey, let's hey Scott, let's give a shout out real quick to Lavita Gibbs. That's a, a new person on, no, on thanks, the broadcast. Lavita. Thanks for joining us. Um, I also want to dedicate this program to Pete Crone, uh, who for years worked at Astronomics, which is one of our dealers in uh, one of our prime dealers in um, in Oklahoma. Uh, he passed away this morning. Uh, you know, due to natural causes. And so, um, you know, I'd just like to say thanks to him for all the yeah. great work he did, uh, you know, both for astronomics, the community, uh, you know, uh, was a great friend to a lot of people, often at the Oki Tech Star Party. Uh, so I'll, I'll miss his voice and uh, his good nature yeah. and his jokes. He was pretty funny. So well, I love talking to him on the phone. He's yeah, great to he, talk to. I really enjoyed working with yeah, him. Yeah. Yep. He did a lot of good for us. So uh, tomorrow we're going to be on at the same time because we have another show with uh, Ray Kahn from Kahn Scope Center up in Canada. So we're kind of covering uh, the Americas here with our dealers and uh, their stories. Take care, everyone, and we will see you. If you want to join us in, at 5 o'clock Central, uh, we'll be on with Rodrigo. He speaks Spanish, but we've got a translator here uh, that will translate um, uh, the questions and everything that we have for him. Yeah, you all get to meet Alex. Yep, you'll get to meet Alex. That's right. Take care, everybody. On, on camera or off? On camera or off? We're still on camera right now. No, is Alex going to be on camera? Yeah, he'll be on camera. He'll be on camera. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye. See you, everybody. Bye.